Hello, this is Bern, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to find out if the guy you're into is emotionally unavailable. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, and heart-centered women how you can attract the man you want and the relationship you crave without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques. If this is your first time here, and this is something that you're really interested in mastering, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can watch more episodes that help you out on this part of your life. There's nothing more painful for so many women than being more into a guy than the guy is into them, than spending days and weeks and months building, quote unquote, a relationship with someone that ends up not going the distance or where they feel they're not met, felt, seen, and love the way they want to. So if this sounds like you, this is something you've been doing for a while or it's a new thing in your life but you can't seem to shake it, this video is for you because I'm demystifying what being unavailable, emotionally available means. Now, I'll share with you before I get fully started that if you want to learn how to attract conscious compatible men and you want to do it from your heart instead of just your mind, you really want to embody this process, the first link on the description of this video will allow you to watch my free masterclass where I can take this concept a lot further than I can in this short video. All you do is enter your, I mean, click on that link, you'll see a page that looks like this, enter your name and email, and you can start watching my free masterclass right away. The first thing I'll share is that attracting unavailable men is not a problem. And I know it seems like one, but it isn't. Here's the problem, wasting time with unavailable men, Invest, investing your energy with unavailable men, not knowing how to identifying, identify them, and therefore spending your wills turning your foot on the brake and the accelerator at the same time to a point where you're not moving but you're still expending a lot of energy. So that's the problem, not identifying them. Now, I'll also share that being unavailable is a gradient. It's not a black and white switch that's on and off. You will find, and my imagination is, my hypothesis, if you're watching my videos right now, and if you're not this category, then probably this video will not be as helpful to you, so you can skip it if you want, is my guess is you want a man that you can build a lifelong relationship with, ideally, and you want that guy to be your lover, you want that guy to be best friends with you, you want a guy to be your cheerleader, you want to add value to his life, you want to connect with him emotionally, spiritually, physically. If that's what you want, for that level of intensity, then there's certain types of men whose level of emotional availability may not fit with yours. They're not bad men, they're not men that I would wish anything bad upon, they're simply not the type of guy who's gonna give you what you want. The problem that I have found more often than not is either women want to create projects out of this man. They feel, well, he's been hurt in the past. He's not opening, but let me show you what I can do with them. And then when I'm done with them, he's going to be the king that I'm hoping for. And that's rarely the case. Or I'm going to be the woman that opens his heart finally. And that's a hit or miss Russian roulette type of game. Many times when it doesn't happen, you waste months or years in the process that you could have invested with someone who's more open emotionally, who's able to give you what you want. So that's one of the problems I see. Women connecting with guys, subconsciously thinking they're gonna rescue him or make him a project or the future will be so much better than it is right now, so I'm willing to be with him right now even though he's not what I want because the future will be better. If that's ever the case, that's the wrong type of guy to connect with. Another problem I've seen on the opposite side of the spectrum is where women are attempting to feel their existential void through a man. So the guy is emotionally available. He's giving them what a healthy human being would give, but they want more. You're looking for someone who answers your text messages in 10 seconds <laughs> average, or someone who wants to talk to you as much as your girlfriends want to talk to you, or someone who is willing to talk about the relationship 24 seven and share his deepest emotions morning, day and night, and that's too much for most human beings, let alone most men. So a balance is what's required. Now, the first sign that I'll share with you right now that you can start identifying that the guy is emotionally unavailable is a guy who doesn't know what he wants in a relationship. Why is this a sign of being emotionally available? So let me clarify. There's guys who don't know what they want, but they might be emotionally available. But the reason why this is such a prevalent sign in guys who are emotionally unavailable is because it's hard to go inside your heart and figure out emotionally what you need in order to determine based on that what you need in a relationship. So because you have the, an inability to figure out your feelings and your needs and your wants, which is part of what being emotionally available is, you never figure out what you want in a relationship. So you connect with women who want a lot more than what you can offer, but you never clarify to them that you can't offer that 
and then you drag them along a path of pain. No need for that. If you know that the guy doesn't know what he wants in the relationship, whether he is emotionally available or not, you shouldn't spend, invest your time with him. Number two, he's a guy who doesn't want to define the relationship. He may know what he wants in a relationship and maybe he's looking for something different from what you want, but when push comes to shove and the conversation comes, he doesn't want to introduce you as a girlfriend. He doesn't want to present you to the world as someone that he really cares about. He's someone who, when you ask him, what are we doing here? He's like, well, we're figuring things out. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to put labels. I don't want to create constraint. I don't want to feel the pressure. So I understand that he doesn't want to say, I want to marry you because he doesn't know that yet, but to not even define what he's going toward, what he's feeling and what this is, makes it very painful, creates a lot of anxiety in women. But if you as a woman who's feeling that, instead of saying, you know what, I'm gonna give you some time to figure out what you want, you double down into doing more stuff, then the anxiety grows and you get more attached to him even though he's not what you're looking for in a relationship. The next sign that the guy is emotionally available is he hates feeling vulnerable and avoids it at all costs. He's unwilling to share his needs with you, not just in a relationship, his needs as a human being in life. His needs in life, his needs in communication. Uh, he doesn't want to share things that make him look bad, which is understandable and human, but when he never shares anything deep about himself, when he can't share his emotions with you, when he can't share what makes him unique and different, when he can't share what makes him afraid, what he, when he can't share his dreams, what is the point of being with a human being where it's an enigma? and you have no idea who he is, what he really wants, that's part of being emotionally available. Next sign he's emotionally available is he doesn't like to share you with his world. His friends, for example, and family. I mean, you've been with him for a year, but you really don't know anyone around him, and he has a bunch of excuses that all sound really reasonable to you, but the more time that goes on, the more you start recognizing there are only excuses. And the main reason he doesn't want to share you with his friends or family is because he doesn't want to present this as something that's going to be stable and long-lasting, so why introduce more emotions and more feelings? Why create an attachment emotionally between the friends and the family to you if he doesn't know what he's going to do or if he's not willing to open or if he knows in his heart that what he has to offer to you is not going to work out in the end, but he's afraid to let you go, he doesn't want to be alone, so he's just dragging you along uh, the ride. Even though he doesn't want to hurt you, he's doing this. Next one is he's not curious or open to your emotional sharing. There's one thing to be said about a guy who can't share his thoughts and feelings, but is really hungry to get to know yours, but there's many guys that you will never ask you questions that go deep into your emotional well-being or into your hunger or into your dreams or into what you really want to do with your life or into how things are going for you. And when you volunteer this information, He's unwilling or unable to hold space for you to the point where your topics of conversation become relegated to menial, superficial shit that is not fun, that is not fulfilling, and after a while, it starts feeling like a dread on the relationship and on your life. Next sign, his past is a mystery to you. He's not willing to share what's going on in his life, his relationships, his childhood, his past work experience. He's very high level in terms of what he shares, and he can't seem to share what his past is, because if you understand his past, you at least understand what has got him to where he is. That doesn't mean he's going to go to the same place, but it means you have a greater context to understand and feel him. It requires vulnerability, it requires courage, it requires openness to share your past with someone. If he's unwilling to do that, one more sign that he's emotionally available. Last one is not about him, but about you. You find yourself constantly justifying his behavior to people you love. It's not that he is not caring, is that he has a lot of work right now. It's not that he doesn't want to introduce me to his family, is that right now uh, they're going through their emotional stuff, so it's not the best time for me to connect with them. Uh, it's not that he doesn't care about me to define the relationship, is that he doesn't want me to put pressure on him right now. To, I mean, you find an excuse for every part of him that is emotionally unavailable to justify staying with them. And sometimes, and the biggest takeaway from this might be that if you constantly find yourself really connecting with, really craving emotionally unavailable men, even though it's painful, you might have a degree of emotional unavailability yourself that's putting a safe problem in front of you instead of focusing on how to create more intimacy. 
because it's a safer problem to point out the guy doesn't want to go the distance than it is to open your heart more and potentially risk getting hurt by someone who can really see you and then leave you. So understand that emotionally, um, that you may be somewhat emotionally unavailable if you continue feeling attached to guys who can't give you what you want. If you find yourself justifying yourself to your friends, to your family, and secretly you think, well, if they, things were to stay the way they are right now, I would never be with them, but they'll get better. If that's the reason why you're staying with them, because of the future, not the present, then that's a clear sign that not only he may be emotionally unavailable, but you're deluding yourself. You're living in a fantasy instead of a real relationship. Hope this is helpful, insightful, and useful to you if it is, and you want to understand, not intellectually, but from your heart and soul, how to attract the type of man you want, go to the first link in the description of this video, click on that link, enter in an email, and you can start watching my free masterclass right away. If you find value in this video, please click like or thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel. When you click the little bell, you'll be notified of new episodes when they come out because there's a chance if you subscribe to my channel, don't do that, that even though you might want to watch this content and it's beneficial to you, that it may not be shown on your feed. And last but not least, if you've been doing the law of attraction, if you've been doing therapy, if you've been watching videos, if you've been reading books, you've been reading articles, you've been talking to your girlfriends and things are not changing. You're running around in circles. You're not moving forward with the quality of life that you want relative to being with your ideal life partner. You might highly benefit from my hand-holding and help this process to attract who you want in a fraction of the time. If that's you, click on the second link in the description of this video and apply to work with me. If we're a fit, I'll reach back and we have a conversation to figure out how this can happen. Thank you so much for connecting with me. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life. Mm -hmm.